Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel and welcome back. It's been a very long time since I've made a video, but I'm going to start up again by making this series on Holly closed loop boost control. So today I'm going to be showing you guys uh, some of the components involved in a closed loop boost control system and just trying to get you to better understand what's going on before we go into some of the tuning aspects. It all comes down to managing these guys, the waste gates. So essentially a closed loop boost control system just means that you have some control of the boost level with time. So you could almost replace the term closed loop with selectable boost. In a traditional system, you set your car up for one boost level and that's all you get. So you might get really bad traction off of the line and really good top end power, or the car might 60 foot really good and have no boost at the top end. So what happens here is as your exhaust flow is directed out of your engine towards the turbo, the wastegates divert some of the exhaust flow from the turbo, which decreases the amount of boost. So here's another shot showing where the wastegates intercept and divert the flow just before the turbo. To understand the control aspects of these systems, we'll first need to look at how the wastegate works, and then we'll be able to understand how to control them. The wastegate consists of a top hat, spring, and a diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is connected to the valve, and that valve is what directs exhaust flow away from the turbo. As the diaphragm moves up and down, you can see that the valve opens and closes. By adding the spring in the top cap, now the valve is stuck in a normally closed position and it will take some force to open the valve. The stronger the spring, the harder it will be to open the valve. Now when you take a look at the whole assembly together, you can see that if you were to apply air pressure to this bottom port here, it would push the diaphragm open and that would release your exhaust and thus control your boost. So when people talk about a four pound spring or a 10 pound spring, that's what they're referring to. It takes more or less four or 10 PSI on the bottom port to open the spring. So obviously if you go with a bigger spring, it's gonna be a lot stiffer. So this bottom port gets air pressure from typically your turbo outlet. Uh, you wanna have this as close to the turbo as possible because if uh, your boost spikes up really high, you can catch it before it's in your intake manifold. So this is how most traditional systems operate. And as you can see, all you can do is control to one boost level. So if you have, for example, a four pound spring, you can put a restrictor or people call it boost control on the line into the bottom port and you can get a little more boost out of it. You can get out of your car and you can spin the knob and you can adjust your boost level, but typically you're only gonna get uh, like about two times of what the spring is. So if you had a four pound spring, you might be able to get eight to 10 pounds of boost. So ultimately this can lead to a lot of things and one of the biggest ones for me at least is traction issues at low speed. So if I was to launch my car at 16 pounds, it wouldn't go anywhere. So I like to be able to launch at four and ramp up to 16 pounds. So what makes this a closed loop boost control system? Well, you can see that if you're to apply pressure to this top port in the wastegate, it will make the diaphragm harder to open. So what you do is you run a really light spring and then you apply air pressure when you want your boost to be higher. So I apply boost through an uh, air tank in my trunk. Some people use CO2, but ultimately what the computer does is it controls the air pressure in the top port, and that's what that air pressure sensor is for. You may notice my car has two wastegates, uh, but the top and bottom ports are both connected. The only reason I have two was just because I thought I might have trouble controlling my really small turbo uh, with a you know fairly large displacement engine. So I hope this video gives you guys a better understanding of how we control boost by using compressed air or something like CO2. The big advantage here is that you can run a really light spring and then apply air pressure as needed to the top of the diaphragm to adjust your boost level. This allows you to do things like boost by speed or boost by gear. My personal favorite is boost by speed because it allows me to launch at a low pressure and get good traction and ramp up the boost as the car starts going faster. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about the computer control side and how to actually make this all work together.